right, good afternoon. Welcome to my daily Facebook Live, my live broadcast, as this will also be on YouTube at some point. Uh, thanks for joining me, and quick introduction to get that out of the way for those people joining me for the first time. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and I do these talks every day. This is Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart, and today's is number 321, and this one's a little bit more tender in some ways. Um, actually, this has come up a lot recently. A friend of mine I was to earlier, and plus some other people I'm talking to, there's this challenge they're facing, so I'm going to talk about that today. So welcome to my broadcast, it's number 321. God, 321 in a row, that's a lot. <laughs> So I do this every day, um, and different topics, different themes, but around the area of love and relationships, masculine, feminine, polarity, purpose, etc. And today's topic is around um, the pain that people have, um, being afraid to love again. And so the topic today, I think I wrote something along the lines of, is, is loving, no, is it too painful to love, love again? Something like that. So basically... That's the question I'm asking. Is loving, is falling in love, is being in a loving relationship too painful now from past experiences? And of course, that's the thing. Is most of that pain that you may be experiencing, or somebody you know might be experiencing, because it may not be you, is 90% of the time it comes from the past relationships. They've been bur you've been burnt too many times, so loving again is a real big risk and it gets more and more challenging because you don't feel safe or you don't feel comfortable opening your heart fully because the last time you did that, or the last four times you did that, it got hurt inside. So I absolutely understand how you feel. And as I was talking to my friend earlier, such a sense of compassion from, comes from me to them because I see what they've been through. I feel for them. And I, I just know how much pain they're hurting, how much is hurting them. I've been there myself in the past. But also the fear that stops them from being willing to risk again because it's like how many times you're going to get hurt before you say no is holding them back from getting what they really want. And there's a piece I want to talk about in the middle of this, because yes, that's something to be worked with and healed, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But a piece that just jumped in as a reminder to me, because it comes through sometimes when I'm not even looking, is that all that past history, all that past pain, is not what you have to go through to find real love. In fact, it's changing your... Well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> Actually, it's, a, it's an... Um, what do you call it? Allegory? No, it's a, it's a little, little piece. It's a, it's a poem sort of thing. So let me tell you this first, and I'll explain what I mean in a moment. Because it just hit me. That's what I'm talking about. It's basically it's a, um, it's a story in four parts. Yeah, story in four parts. And it goes like this. I'm walking down the road, and I fall down a hole. That's one. Number two. I walk down, walking down a road. I see the hole, I still fall in it. That's number two. Number three is I walk down the road, I see the hole, and I work my way around the outside of it and keep walking. And number four is I walk down a different road. Now what's it going to do with this, you're wondering? I will tell you. We are usually wired by experience to do things a certain way. That's kind of the human paradigm that we play in until we change. Now, I'll tell about change in a moment, so I guess I'm, I guess I'm telling myself I'm planting seeds, and I can tell you more stuff until you, so I keep planting seeds. But anyway, we as human beings tend to repeat patterns because we learn that's the way to do things. So if you've gone into a relationship where you get hurt because that's the way you've been wired, it's like falling down that, down that hole. And even though you're aware of it, you might go back into it again without realizing and get hurt once again. So your heart gets wounded enough times you won't want to, want, to, want, want, want to be in a relationship again because you're so frustrated with every time you fall in love, you get hurt. Why do you want to do it? Which makes total sense. I mean, it's a logical choice to protect yourself and take care of yourself by not falling in love. But then, of course, you don't get to have the joy of being in love either. But having the sense of the joy of love tied to the pain of love tied together can be really challenging. And that's the idea about going down the street with a hole in it. How do you get to the street without a hole? And that's the piece I'm talking about with the healing. Once you become clear of what's been out of alignment for you, what's been challenging you, and especially with what's wired into your programming, because the thing about it is you're not really choosing those intentionally, consciously. Nobody does that unless they're a real masochist. And you may be a masochist, but not usually this way. 
What's usually going on is your subconscious mind, which I've talked about many times before on my broadcast, has got an autopilot running. It's like running a um, recording of the same experience again and again. So no matter what you think you're doing, you've set up the same place again, which is a place that is of pain, of hurt, of suffering. Even though you wanted to have an amazing, loving, joyful, uplifting relationship, what you ended up with wasn't that. You're normal if that happens to you. It's not like an unusual thing, and, and it's sad to say, but a lot of people go through this. But most people aren't watching my videos, <laughs> and most people don't do anything about it because they don't think there's a choice. They think they're stuck in this routine for the rest of their lives, and they, make up with, they put up with it. And some of them choose to get into relationships where in the first six months or a year, they're getting abused by their partner, and they get married to them and spend 25, 30, 40 years the rest of their lives with them, even while they're getting abused. So there are people out there who do that. I'm trusting you don't. But I will give you a little insight to what can happen when you choose differently and how to choose differently so you don't have to repeat that again. The reality is that opening your heart is a stretch for a lot of people. Opening your heart to receive and give love, it's not necessarily an easy thing to do because there is a risk involved, which is to be exposed and to be vulnerable and to be basically spiritually naked, as it were, or emotionally naked, and it can hurt. Or I should say, you run the risk of being hurt. And if you've been in partial relationships where that happened, your wariness and your sensitivity to being hurt again is extremely high. So you're going to be more and more cautious to keep your heart closed for safekeeping. But that's not the answer. That's a protection, but it's not an answer. It's a way of stopping from being hurt once again. But the truth is also, you, because it's so closed, you can't love again either. So if you're in a position where that's happened to you, listen up. This is going to be a piece I want to give you that will help you with where you want to go. Your true... Um, opportunity is learning how to love yourself and how to heal this wound that's in the past so you can now move forward into truly attracting the right relationship and you can do that so let me give some, cl some, some clues along your path first of all recognize please that what happened before does not have to dictate your future even though you may have repeated this thing 17 times that past experience does not have to repeat itself in the future not necessarily that's number one. Number two is, I can say this, go easy on yourself. Tell yourself the truth, which is not that you chose a bad relationship and you keep doing that. What the truth has been is that you made some mistakes in the past, perhaps. You've had some lessons in the past. You've had some dysfunctional relationships in the past. You've chosen partners who weren't your best choice because you didn't know any differently at the time. All of those may be true. However, the reality is when you say that is that's the past. There is opportunity and freedom to choose the future differently. So the first step is recognizing that it has happened. I think that's what I said. <laughs> the second is that it's really in the past. The third part is to restart to put the energy of that love you're putting out there to seek something inside. I talked about this yesterday the other day before about self-love. And I'm not going to repeat that necessarily in detail here. But the truth is that the healing that happens for you if you've been wounded in the past comes from loving yourself in the present. It comes from truly um, honoring who you are. And it means doing the work to heal the wounds and the, um, the scars, the emotional scars, and the past programming and beliefs that you're still carrying so they no longer keep running your choices in the future. I'm not sure which way I'm pointing now because that was, that, was, that was past, that's future, I think, as well, doing on the camera. So anyway, bear with me. So... That's number three. Number four is to get the help you need. To get the help, whether it's from a relative or a new relationship. No, I won't say that one. Let me be clear on that one for a second. Choosing a new relationship to heal your wounds from a partial relationship is not the best solution. It's a solution and it might work. But the percentage of the, the, the um, likelihood of it working are, are less than 50%. I haven't done any research for that. It just feels that way because most people who choose new relationships to heal the wounds from the past tend to exacerbate and repeat the ones from the past anyway. It doesn't work. So seeking someone who's more dispassionate, someone who's passionate for your support, but who's dispassionate about your situation, who's more neutral, who's more able to facilitate and hold the space for you is absolutely the right way to do it. And by getting the help you need from outside, especially from somebody who has compassion, understanding, and a neutral position gives you perspective that you don't actually have at this point because you're looking through the lens of your history 
And that lens that you're looking through is going to make it seem like the only option out in the world matches what you see in your history, which is, your, which is the lens you're looking through. And if you don't want to keep repeating the past experiences, you want to take those glasses off, as it were. And having someone to help you take those off is the way to get through this. I just had a flashback. Sorry, I was just I was doing this because last night I went to see Ready Player One, which was all about virtual reality, which is a very fun movie, very <coughs> highly recommended, but side by completely. But I just had this vision of doing that. So that's probably why I did that instead of just doing this. But <laughs> welcome to my mind doing its strange thing once again. <coughs> Rewind a bit. Back to where I was. So... <laughs> Those wounds in your heart can hurt. I have been there myself. I know what it feels like. I've got clients. I've been helping with that. And I've really felt how much gratitude I have to be able to facilitate, support, and help my clients heal because the more people who have healed hearts they can love fully again, the more this planet's going to change and certainly the more my environment changes. So I'm very selfish about this. My giving is from a place of really desiring to make sure other people live their life wholeheartedly. That works. So there was a piece that I was going to drop in. What was the last piece? While I'm waiting for that piece to drop in, let me just give you a couple of things to consider. Um, if this is something you're stuck with and you want to get help, that's what I'm here for. That's why I do these videos. I mean, there's 321 of them so far, including this one. Um, but a lot of them require action steps. Because the thing about this is you can watch these videos and take, take notes from these and do some things yourself. <laughs> But the biggest piece is taking some conscious action to make a change. And my invitation for you to do that is to step, step into a free conversation with me, which is basically, if you go to my um, website, I have a place where you can click in a Let's Chat button on the navigation bar, which is the place you can find out how to have a complimentary clarity conversation with me. Sounds fancy, doesn't it? The triple C. Complimentary clarity conversation. It's a 30-minute conversation, basically, where I'm here to support you as my gift to you, and your, in, your investment is your time and your willingness to share. That will get you forward. In, that will take get you further down the road of where you want to go. And if it lines up, we want to work together. So be it. I'm waiting for that piece to drop in. Still hasn't come in yet. All right, moving on. These videos, if you haven't watched my videos before, are broadcast on Facebook Live, usually around 4:30 p.m. Pacific time. Seems to be my usual time nowadays. Um, if you haven't seen my other broadcasts, you can watch them on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby Author. You can also watch them on my. It's tough opening your heart when you have been wounded and and hurt before. Exactly, Danny. That was what I was talking about. And if you didn't watch the beginning of this, I spoke to that. And that's part of my work. Even though I'm a relationship coach helping clients attract amazing relationships, 90% of my work is heart-centered. Heart healing and wound removal, as it were. So absolutely understand it is tough. It is, it's tougher if you don't get help, to be honest. That's the reality I experienced. Because when I went through that myself, I got help. Which is why I passed the gift along and served my clients. So I'm not speaking from a theory. This is from personal experience. And also from a lot of study and learning over the years, too. So there's that. Um, my Facebook Lives are stored, again, on my business page on Facebook, as well as on my YouTube channel, so they end up there as well. Uh, and that's Barry Selby is the, is the um, channel? No, the profile. And Message of the Masculine is the playlist. And, of course, they do end up on my website at some point, although I'm going to reformat that at some point. They do end up on a page called Video Blog. Again, you can get that to my website, which is barryselby.com. You click on the video blog, you can also click again on the Let's Chat button to get a discovery session with me. And I think that's it. There's one other piece that was dropping in that hasn't happened yet. What is that other piece? That's it. Okay, so one more piece to add into this before I sign off. It's easy to think that the next person is going to be perfect. Because people do. It's kind of easy for people to think, I'm not saying you, I'm saying people, just to keep it neutral. I'm not saying you would do this. You might know somebody who does. But thinking that the next person will be the person that will change everything for them. The next lover will be the one that will heal everything. They'll feel safe again. They'll open their heart. But nine times out of ten, they're going to get wounded again. So that vain hope that the next person is going to fix everything for you isn't always going to do it. And I would suggest strongly that you get some real support, some real guidance, and some real healing because you deserve an amazing, healthy relationship. And to keep doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different result, is the definition of insanity. So I recommend you get sane, you take some steps, get what you really want, and you actually get a whole heart in the process. Thank you for watching my broadcast. I think that basically summarizes, gives, me, gives you everything you need. Um, if you're just joining in and watching, watching it now, please watch from the beginning. Um, homework, 
I do need to give you homework, don't I? Yes. This I gave yesterday, but I'll do it again today, and I've used it before. If you're someone who's looking to heal your heart, you've been, it's been wounded for a long time, one of the first things you can do for yourself and your own time without anybody's help is to give yourself some love. Your homework, should you choose to accept it, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to take five minutes of your time um, right after this broadcast or later on tonight or in the morning or both times and to just put your hands over your heart and tell yourself you love you. Or tell yourself I love you. I, you know what I mean. Do that in the mirror as well as touching, uh, touching, connecting in so you can feel it connecting through the mirror into your own eyes. Through your eyes to the, other, to the mirror and back again. So you feel it. Do that for five minutes. Do that in the morning. Do that also in the evening. Five minutes in both ends. Do that for a month, 30 days, and watch your life transform. And that's your homework. The other homework, if you want to sign up, is to get a complimentary clarity conversation, as I mentioned, and you know where to go get that on my site. Um, I'd love to support you. If you're stuck in this area and it hurts, I'm here for you. And if you want to move forward in your life in a big way, take some steps to get there. I'll meet you on the way. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow with number 322 around this time again tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.